Hello lovelies, welcome to my first episode at Lulu's Art Creations. I am your host, Lulu, and as always I'm accompanied by Lila, my Velcro. Hope everyone had a good new year. I spent mine curled up on the couch drinking sparkling grape juice. Not even wine, just sparkling grape juice with my husband. Uh, this was his idea. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into it. I'll be working in Clip Studio Paint, making a piece for the new year calling it the Celestial Tiger, though I think I could have added more stars to it. <laughs> um, as you can see, I'm starting with the initial sketch. Um, there's a rough sketch, and then I do a, a lesser <laughs> rough sketch, and then I'll ink that. unnecessary sketches and just focus on the line work. I'm using the basic lighter pencil tool with the hardness all the way up. I've tried inking with the pens that are on Clip Studio Paint and they work beautifully. I just have an issue with creating like little thin wisps with them. I guess it's just the way that I draw and how I react with my Cintiq. Um, it's something I need to you know play around more with but maybe maybe get the settings a little bit more right and I don't know. Honestly, I started using the pencil after I got my iPad and just seemed to really like how it, it turned out. So I do the same technique with the flowers and the stars of, I have a, you know, a really rough sketch and then I'll make a lesser rough sketch and then I'll go back and ink it. Uh, drawing flowers can be tricky and I plan to go more into details on how I construct them. Uh, I've realized that there's not very many tutorials out there for that. It's just like, draw this, draw that, and bam, you have a flower. <laughs> uh, but usually I like to draw like a, the bulb or the the little bud area with all the pollen. Um, then I decide which direction I want that flower to face. I'll create a, another circle um, and another like a flat circle and sometimes a bowl shape that kind of it kind of helps you define like where which direction your petals are gonna go. You know and then from there I draw like either smaller circles or just like fat blobby circles to get the shape of the petals and you know it finding the perspective on the flower petals is kind of kind of the hard part and Lila over here does not like me talking about the flowers okay okay my goodness I guess my explanation was not satisfying to her I draw a lot of flowers but I still struggle with them a lot <laughs> um you know, sometimes it feels like my, my hands can't quite find the right shape. So, I, you know, I'll just keep playing around until I feel like 
you know, this is somewhat right or I'll just get really annoyed with it and <laughs> just like, nope, I'm done.
I absolutely love stars, but my god, do I struggle drawing them. I think it's those straight lines. It, it's seriously <laughs> my kryptonite. I, I, I just can't with straight lines. <laughs> they end up like tapering or they'll end up like having some weird little bumps in them. Anyway, so I quote unquote cheat, aka being efficient with my time because obviously I cannot draw straight lines. Uh, which, you know, this is a huge contract. Don't gatekeep yourself. Like, if you can find an easier way of just like copying and pasting something, like flowers, for example, they're very tedious to draw. And I'll end up just copying and pasting it and just fluffing it up a little bit to make it look a little different or, you know, flip it and whatnot. And, you know, this is how you efficiently, you know, spend your time painting. You, you can't draw every single thing from scratch. I mean, you can. It just will be ridiculous sometimes. <laughs> I don't recommend it. And like I was saying before, Lila is Velcro. And so right about here, uh, the help, <laughs> AKA Lila, comes to help me draw. And literally, I, <laughs> I have to put a blanket on my desk so she will lay down there instead of laying on my arms. It works about 90% of the time. The other 10% she has to have mama loving. Like, it's ridiculous. She is, she is my love, but me good. She is very clingy. Josie, on the other hand, which is my other fluffy cat, she does not care. She'll sleep on the ground on a on the ground or on a blanket. Usually I try to put a blanket down so she has something comfy to sleep on, but she doesn't care. She's she's chill. Lila's like, no, you must patch me now. <laughs> okay, so now that all the inking is done, it is time to move on to the coloring, which is a fun part, but it can also be frustrating. Just depends on what you're good at. I'm a little bit better with inking than I am coloring. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm very terrible at deciding the colors beforehand. I usually wing it. And yes, it does backfire on me. And that's why we have hue and saturation and all the other lovely uh, adjustments that we can do.
to change the line work to better fit the color scheme of my piece. Um, I try not to go too light because then it'll just blend in and then you won't, it'll be a waste of time doing all that ink work. I mean, if you're going to change it to be something different and then like use that to blend with your colors to make it more realistic, that might work. But I try to, I like having my ink work and then have the coloring and you know, and that way I can also get away with not being super realistic with my shading, um, which I do like realistic shading. It's just more time consuming and doesn't always, you know, give me the drawing that I want. I, I just, I really, really love line work, like obsessed with line work. I think it's gorgeous. I used to, you know, I used to wish I could just do the most ridiculous detail of line work but you kind of have to pull yourself back when it comes to that because sometimes the stupid saying i really hate it but less is more like you want the eyes to not see all of the tiny fine details you want to see some of the fine details but you also want your color to stand out it's best you know you need to find the direction of your light uh, usually I'll draw like a little circle up top and then just kind of have a line pointing down where the light is hitting so I, I know where it's at um, a good thing to do and I didn't quite do it with this piece I just kind of went with it I was kind of looking at a reference also but um, is to draw your shadows in big shapes and then you like will slowly like use the erasure tool to make them smaller but to have like the big initial shapes helps clarify the shadows you know and then you need your you know your highlights and then you have your base color and whatnot and going from there blending colors i might make a video to go in more detail about it um you can see on my flowers a little later on how i kind of did it. I didn't quite do it with the tiger, like I said, but the flowers, you'll see, I cut the shadow on the bottom, but I also use that shadow color to kind of use it as like detail on the flower.
decided to come out of retirement and help her colleague finish the drawing. So, I forgot two things in this drawing. Uh, one, I caught before I finished the drawing, which, if you notice, the uh, other side of the tiger does not have stripes. Um, the other one is, and I caught this while editing, my cat does not have any whiskers. So, I'm going to have to go back and draw the whiskers in, and hopefully I remember to do that. I made a note of it. So, yeah, it's totally going to get done. Uh-huh, uh-huh.
thank you for sticking around. If you have any requests or questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I hope your 2022 will be good for you, and I'll see you next time.